And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And I thought I'd have a go over this beautiful little base that's running on one kilo of methane. We've moved in our team. Uh, we have Tesseract down here and we have Uda George over here. And we've even put in a little mini pod over here. This mini pod was just so that they have a, a gate. I want to put a gate on every planet. I've been forgetting to do that, so why not? Now, there's been no real major changes to the design here. One kilo of methane comes in, we turn it into polluted water, that polluted water gets boiled, turned into clean water for our oxygen and such like. So this entire thing is running off the one kilo of methane. The only real change I made was I introduced a recreation room. Uh, you see, it turns out when they have recreational time or downtime where they don't have to use the bathroom or get food or anything like that, they go to the nearest recreation room. And if no recreation room exists, they go and hang out at the gate, which was actually outside here beyond the atmosphere docks, and I didn't want them in the atmosphere for no apparent reason. As it is, we're getting enough thimble reed now from them using the toilets and the sinks, and that provides them thimble because they barely go outside. The majority of their time is spent inside this colony, so it doesn't really matter. The only time they need to go outside is when there's something out here that needs doing. For example, we printed some sweet legs and dumped them up there. And this whole colony is functioning perfectly. Oh, and one change we made was right here. Now, this here is our water storage tank. This uh, gives us a backup of five tons of clean water that can be dumped onto the system to help provide all of the resources for our colony, you know, the food, toilets, all that. However, now we've put on an overflow, so when we actually have too much water, which can happen, we're, okay, we're 40 or 50 kilos short at the moment, but when it does happen, it goes over here and gets dumped into the water tank. So that means any excess water provided by Aku gets sent over there for storage, which neatly brings us on to the next step, because we sort of want to use this storage, like, this planet is called Water Tank now, and since it's a water tank, well, we should probably, you know, use it for water storage. Now down here, where is it, we've got these liquid tanks, these got installed a long, long time ago. This actually, majority came from ice, oh, there was also a bunch of water down here. But these uh, oxide refineries were generating a lot of heat, so all I did was I dumped down a bunch of ice temperature shift plates, and then I pumped the water into these tanks and I had it rotate around a bunch. And I just rotated it around and around and around until they absorbed enormous amounts of heat. This stuff is all up to 50 degrees. I mean, it started out freezing, and now it's at 50 degrees just because of all the heat generated by these oxide refineries. We really should have put in a permanent cooling station, but never mind. The water here, we are going to ship up to the top, and all of that water we're going to send along to this interplanetary launcher, which is set to fire it over to Dampona. Which means, uh, all of this water will get sent over for long-term storage there. Now, it will take a little bit of time to get there, but that's okay. This would be part of our long-term goal. All excess water on planets would, would just be sent to Dampona, because we don't need it. So right now, we have a bunch of polluted water getting dumped into these storage tanks here. Any excess polluted water we don't need just gets dumped into these storage tanks, then gets turned into polluted oxygen to get turned into uh, ceramics. But we're not going to need ceramics much more. We've got 342 tonnes already. So I think all future excess water, once this uh, the, the water tanks at the bottom are cleared, will be filtered and sent over to Tampona for storage. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. And as a final note, this is uh, the oil planet, and on the oil planet here, we actually do produce some excess water occasionally. Not right now, the steam vent is dormant. But the plan would be to basically run the excess water up to one of these cannons up here and launch it over to Dampona as well. We want to make sure all the excess water gets stored in the water tank colony. Yes, we have now turned an entire planet into a water tank, and I think that was time well spent. Now, that leads us up to our next problem. Uh, yeah, if we check inside here, these are our colonizing rocket zones where we get everyone to build stuff. There's a little bit of a problem. They're getting hot. Well, we, we dump in an awful lot of hot materials in here, like steel, uh, thermium, all sorts of stuff, and it's been heating up these, these ships. So what I did was I decided to uh, maybe flush them with a little bit of cold water. And by that, you'll see that we've got a bunch of pipes here, and I've basically rewired the whole thing, so instead of dumping their water into toilets, it just goes out the other side. And this has... Uh, so basically it's two kilos of cold water flowing through here, and it's managed to chill the place down a bit to something approaching livable. Just about. On the outside here you'll see, where is it, we've got a little valve here and it's limiting to two kilos per second. So let's two kilos of water through per second and we've got that cold water coming from, actually I'm not even sure where that cold water comes from. Uh, over here? Ah, okay, so it comes out of this. Grand, so the cold water is actually coming from our filtered polluted water and that's the overflow on something. Or, you know what, this doesn't make a difference, so long as it chills down those capsules. Our next plan? We're heading over to get ourselves a whole bunch of iron. We are going to Calderon. Caldera? Whatever, I'm going to call it Calderon. There is four volcanoes here, and we want to turn this place into a giant steam room. And I think for this colony, we're only going to have one duplicate. That's actually sort of the joy of doing it right now, is 
we have to make a little colony on every planet and that requires you to do everything. It's like the start of the game. You know, the start of the game is sometimes the most fun because you're doing lots of little things to make a sustainable colony. But you get to do that multiple times just in slightly different ways. While we let all that chilling go ahead, there is one thing I'd like to take care of on the side. And that is the permanent cooling solution I was talking about for down here. This oxalite is, well, it's too to toasty down there. It's got above 50 degrees and it's kind of getting annoying. So I think we'll just cool down this whole area using this. This was built a long, long, long time ago, and its plan was to cool down a bunch of hydrogen. That hydrogen cools down this area, and it keeps all our food nice and chill. We have 20 million calories, so it's been working really, really well. However, we put in this aqua tuner here to cool down the steam turbine that, in case it overheated a little bit, but at the same time, I was assuming we would use it at some point to, you know, well, cool stuff. But, turns out, just never got around to it. So what we'll do now is we'll actually... Hey, get, where'd you go? Give me, give me back liquid pipe. Yep, you can hook up to there. What we'll do is we'll clean out all of the polluted water. We don't want that as a coolant anymore. We'll, we're going to switch this over to super coolant to modernize it. That's the actual toilet line, so all of that will get sent over there, sent through filtration, and be disposed of. And then we can slice this back up. There we go. New cooling loop installed. Super coolant will get shunted around here, down through this area, then right back up again. And maybe I should spread it out and cool more of the area, but I think temperature-wise are pretty good. Ooh. Down. Okay, maybe a little bit through these sections. Uh, actually, I have to be really careful about how we construct things. Reason being is the only reason we've got 19 people at home right now is because six of them are the construction crew or are back. That's a lot of our industrial power. The moment they leave, this place becomes, well, very difficult to get anything done with because most of the time is spent farming, cooking, uh, also smashing up stuff like eggshells and things like that, and doing an awful lot of metal refinement. Like right now, we still have a whole bunch of thermium to be refined and a whole bunch of, yeah, thermium, wolframite, a whole bunch of junk needs to be done and rockets keep flying back and forth. In fact, a whole bunch of our crew are in rockets. Like we have 28 people and currently nine of them are not even on planet. That's, uh, that's a lot. Okay. Right. But let's just finish this off and then we can launch our rockets to the next planet. That is a glorious sight. A loop of super coolant going all the way around, turning this entire place into a nice balmy livable area. Area. Now, down here, yeah, we've got plenty of oxalite. Uh, this is now a much cooler area, so the oxide should hopefully come out colder as well. Uh, we've also demolished all of that old stuff there. That can all be swept up. And up here, we've made some changes. This year was where all our polluted water was going. So our excess polluted water was getting dumped into these liquid tanks. These liquid tanks would then get deconstructed and the polluted oxygen was getting turned into clean oxygen, which we were basically dumping most of it into space, but just so we could get clay. And the clay was for ceramic. But now, all of that polluted water gets sent over here and then that polluted water is going to get tacked on like that. And let's cancel any override commands. Now that polluted water is going to get filtered it's going to get loaded up over here into that interplanetary launcher and it's going to get sent to our water tank. And the water tank over here, oh wow, is that... Yeah, this is our water tank over here. Since the gases are solid, or since the methane comes in solid, that's a completely different loadout. So this thing can handle both liquids and gases at the same time. So really makes no difference what we send over here, so it won't interfere with the actual gases. Well, it could theoretically if we sent over so many interplanetary payloads, it couldn't get around to opening the actual payloads, but as so long as the payloads get open at some point, they, there's no clogs uh, that it can potentially happen. So this place should just become a, a nice big storage tank. Oh, wow, our water's actually gone below that level. Hmm. I think there's something we want to do to change that. Yeah, I've got an idea. So what we have done here is we've put together ourselves a little rocket. Now you'll notice there's, there's not a lot in that rocket. In fact, that rocket's pretty bare bones, if, even if I do say so myself. So what we're doing is we're going to get that rocket to take off with, uh, I think Brendan's inside there. Yeah, Brendan, why don't you uh, immediately launch? Oh, great, automation's not working. One second, we'll get you to launch into space. And once you're up there, Brendan is now trapped on a ship that is, well, completely useless. It also doesn't have any life support or anything like that, but that's okay. We're just going to immediately deploy them back to the surface. Uh, in fact, you can go right there. Off you go, buddy. Yep, and they are gone. They're off this rocket, which is called Exploratory Beauty. Uh, at the risk of spoiling what this is going to be for, this is going to be called Signal Relay. Signal Relay 1? Maybe we'll have more of them. Anyway, you. I want you to head just to about, oh, I'm going to say it there. That seems like a decent location. When it comes to these signal things, they only have a five tile radius. So let's just say grab this one here. This is unnamed broadcaster. Okay, this 
oil and range channel selector I want you to select that one this is the oil and range one which is over at Texas now I haven't done this before so I think I know what's going on this year the signal will now get sent will get telegraphed across to the one we've got inside our relay because the range of these is only five tiles but it's getting all the way to this one now this relay, which is called Unnamed Broadcaster, oh god, we're going to have to rename these one second. This one has now been renamed to Relay Oil Needs Water, which, yes, perfect. Now, that means the signal from the oil planet is getting to here, which then gets sent to here, which then we should be able to go to the water planet. Now, oh god, which one did I hook it up to? All right, I did put this in earlier. So you... You need oil needs water is out of range. You can't reach that. But the relay for oil needs water oh, also out of range. How do I get you back in range? How can I untick you? You know what? I'll leave you there. This thing needs to come within five tiles of this planet. And currently it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. So it's six tiles away. Oh, wait. That way. You know what? I want you to go that way, maybe? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. At that location, both of them can hit you, but I think I'll move you to there eventually. Let's just fast forward time a little bit until those all get in range of each other. While we're waiting for that, one thing has come to my attention. The rad suits look really awesome when you don't have the helmet animation. The helmet animation on Brendan here is enough because they came out of one of the, uh, the drop pod things. So they actually look pretty awesome in that suit. Hmm. I wonder if there's a mod to get rid of the stupid helmets. Hmm, never mind. They kind of do look funny with those big helmets on. We'll leave it, we'll leave it. All right, uh, give me one minute. Excellent news. The ship has moved in range. So now it's five tiles away from water tank and five tiles away from Aku, Texas. Relay oil needs water is in range. Perfect. That means it is now sending a regular signal all the way from the other planet, which means we can get rid of that switch. Meaning now that will only fire if it needs water. And the signal for that is, okay, this is going to be kind of dumb. But the signal from that is coming from over here, which comes from this water tank. If this water tank is full above like 90%, it just, it stops requesting water and we don't need any more. We've got several more water tanks of storage down there. Though this thing holds pretty much infinite water. There is 75 tons of water stored up in this. In fact, this thing can hold infinite water for now, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Plus, it will just keep storing up more and more water and draining the water tank. I want the water tank to actually fill up all the way. I, I want a planet full of water. Just just once. Just once in one of my playthroughs, I want to fill a whole planet just to the brim to see what it's like. I know it's pointless, but I'm going to try it, right? Anyway, with that done, all we have to do now is start sending our, our teams. I think we've got all of the projects we want done while we're home. I think it is... Oh, actually, yeah, these done here. Down here, this is where we're still refining our uranium, and it's going ahead quite strongly. We've got at least 1.3 tons in all of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Say we got about seven, eight tons. We got about eight tons more uranium in there. So we can fill this place up, and we can fire some more uranium over to Texas. Uh, right here, we've only got about ooh, 446 cycles left, and there's another, what, ton of cycles probably on the wire. So, yeah, we got an easily 500 cycles worth of uranium left on Texas. But we do want to keep an eye on that and top it up before it runs out. For now, though, we're going to need our hydrogen rockets for the next location. That's because Calderon over here, very far away. But I've got, got an idea as to how we can painlessly switch them over. We're going to put three people in this module. With all three on board, we now have another builder module we can use. Now wait, wait, I know what you're thinking, but we've only got space for one more hydrogen rocket. No, 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 it's fine. What we'll do is we will change this one. This one is going to start heading over towards Calderon, right? Come on. Now, once you're launched, what we can do now is, come on, guys, anyone wanna? Perfect. We can come back over here. Now, this interior has cooled down quite a bit. It's not perfect, but it's been cooled down quite substantially. Oh, you might be noticing there's a bunch of junk on the ground. Well. Sorted it a big sweep back on the water tank planet. And by big sweep, I mean, well, we swept everything. In fact, we swept the entire bottom of the map. There's nothing left. We cored out this entire planet and then loaded it all onto the rockets. So Builder 2 has a whole bunch of resources on here and Builder 1 have a whole bunch of resources on here. In fact, there are many, 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 many tons of stuff on here. So I'm thinking just leave them here. These are Builder rockets, so... Why not? So I'm thinking what we do now is we get the rest of the crew on board this one. Once we have them on board, we launch them for a very, very brief flight, basically into orbit.
then after they're in orbit, we immediately land them again. But this time, over here in the hydrogen section. And if I've measured that correctly, there should be no... Yeah, I was worried that those might intersect with the oxygen ones, but I checked the numbers, it was fine. Perfect, now you can all get out. And now we'll do a couple of minor modifications. And by minor changes, I mean we completely switch it into a hydrogen rocket, which we can then fill up with hydrogen and launch off to follow off in the second builders. Then as well as that, I think we'll lock the fuel tank so that when we come back, we can switch it back to radiation again. Reason being, I think this is the only planet that that's far away. Bar, maybe Pulse, no, yeah, the one with the tree. Ooh, actually in the fire planet. Mm, but I think most of our next colonizations are going to be in the local ones, so we'll just use these for a one-off mission to get this one under wraps because we really do want the iron from there. And once that's done, we're going to stay a little bit more local. I think the next planet's going to be an industrial one. I want to put eight duplicates on a planet and just turn it into a, just an industrial sauna, like a giant industrial... You know what? We'll worry about that later. For now, let's just get this hydrogen rocket finished. Renovations complete. We now have a second hydrogen rocket ready to go and take care of all the building. And not only do we have a second hydrogen rocket ready to go for all the building, this rocket contains a whole bunch of uh, extra resources, including graphite, lead, gold, like just a whole bunch of nice resources that we can use. One of the nice things about this was also, oh, you guys want to wanna launch like anytime soon, guys? You just, just, off you go. One of the really nice things was back on the water planet here, we made our gate over here, this minipod, out of graphite, which normally you wouldn't because it's sort of rare everywhere else bar on the water planet, but it has a melting point of 276.9 degrees, meaning if you ever want to melt this gate, it shouldn't be that hard. It's just sometimes you don't like the gate and you want to destroy it and replace it with something else. Uh, oh, and we've already inspected it. It's fine. You can get uh, new items of information every time you inspect one of these gates. So I wonder if there'd be a reason to build these gates out of graphite, melt them, and then build them back up again. Mm, you know what? That, that's, that's for another day. For now, we are pumping water and we are also are we extracting methane at the same time no just water for now but i think i think we're golden for a while let's uh let's move over to our next planet and start modifications our rockets have finally reached calderon excellent now we just need to get ourselves down a second rocket platform which means we're probably going to need to expand out this little sort of area Problem is, it's just the, the heat off these hydrogen rockets is going to melt everything if we're not careful, so let's just make ourselves a little insulated box here to prevent any of that nastiness from happening. While I was busy putting in our second rocket silo there to get us all sorted and ready to go, I made one minor mistake. I forgot to get through a suit repair up and running, and I didn't bring any spare suits, so, um... Yeah, we're just gonna have to hold our breath for a bit while we try and repair exosuits in a vacuum. That's, uh probably fine. In fact, uh, I think what we'll do here is we will set that to maximum priority to make sure I don't mess these up again. Ugh, every time. It's fine, it's fine. We'll get some, some suits up and running and we'll have everyone back in the ship in no time. To help make sure that our batteries don't go down either, we're, we're gonna throw down a coal generator. And the great thing is, since we took all the contents of the last ocean planet with us, this means we've actually brought along a bunch of random resources in here, like 20 tons of coal, some graphite, and like lots of raw materials. I'm liking the idea of actually just bringing all of the raw materials from all the plants we encounter inside a rocket module. It's completely busted, but it does make terraforming planets much, much simpler. All right, that should provide us with power. We shouldn't have to worry about uh, ever having to put in a wheel inside one of our content or one of our rockets. Then we can start getting rid of these, and we can put down. Actually, we can use iron. Yeah, there's 283 tons of iron on this planet. That's a that's a reasonable amount. It's a very 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 reasonable amount and we'll just get rid of all of that steel wire we don't want to melt it and accidentally have it disappear into the background of space we're going to bring in team two now as well though i think maybe we're not going to let them out of the capsule just yet otherwise things are going to get really confusing because i just remembered i forgot to put doors on the capsules well actually we'll wait until the the oh wow that actually yeah those rockets are really hot but, uh, yes, we will put in some doors first, then, then after the doors are in, we'll let those others out. With the doors configured, the first thing I thought of doing was maybe just clearing this area out here. We're going to leave this for rocket exhaust. That should capture the exhaust plume. Yeah, perfectly. Uh, however, I also want to do one other thing, and that is shield in the top here. We want to get up top and put in a layer of igneous rock tiles, just to help shield the radiation so when our dupes are getting in and out of the rockets, they don't get so toasty all the time. You can see there they've got uh, a little bit of green skin going on, and uh, I'd prefer to cut back on that if at all possible. 
I think that is looking slightly better. Okay, it's down to 100 rads per cycle if they stand in there, which is still better than the 250 they were getting before. This should at least prevent them from uh, ending up too irradiated, as long as we keep sending over rad meds, which means we're probably going to need to put down some sort of landing spot or uh, mm, an area to accept incoming resources, especially uh, you don't want to get, sh get shortchanged where you're you're going along, everything's going fine, and then suddenly you realize you've just run out of anti-rad medication and all of your duplicates are suddenly throwing up everywhere. It can be a little bit annoying. Quick bit of cargo unloading right there, two tiles to the right, three tiles to the left, so right about there. Yeah, one, two, yeah, whatever. One, two, three, yeah, that should be just about right. Perfection. Now, since this always comes up, the reason I don't use bunker doors is they don't block nearly as many rads. Uh, this year blocks 60% of the rads. Bunker doors only block 25, which is a difference of 100 versus 186. So, yeah, we're just gonna not use bunker doors. I don't really see the point of bunker doors for blocking radiation. You're better off using plastic or lead. All right, then that means we need to come down here and... Ooh, first thing I want to do is actually start moving all of that iron. Some of that iron is incredibly hot. It's like a thousand degrees. Ooh, 100, 1,000, well, 1,200, 762. We want to take all of that and I want to dump it right down here at the bottom. We're going to melt this planet. We're going to melt it all. But first, first we've got to get it all to the bottom. The plan here is incredibly simple. What we're going to do is put in one auto sweeper made of thermium, one automatic dispenser. Uh, we're just going to set you to all and priority one. And done. There we go. It'll now just drop all of that stuff down. I should press, turn off, get something that allows me to turn off manual use. There's a mod that allows you to turn off manual use, but you know what? We're not going to use that just yet. But, oh wow. Uh, guys, you're actually going around to do all that, aren't you? I need to find some construction tasks for you to do. Namely, building out more of these. Ooh, one of the volcanoes is about to go off. Um, now, when this activates, it... Maybe we can cancel the analysis just for a minute, Zap. Thanks for showing up, though, at just that particular moment. It was, it was beautiful. But it drives up the temperature of the granite up here quite a lot. And it should hit just about 100 degrees. And when it does, there's sort of a little flaking occurrence that happens in the water above it. See? It's not actually 100 degrees, but little blobs of it starts turning into steam and then condensing back down. Which is why the top of the map is actually pretty toasty. For an ice planet, this place is well toasty. Namely because we uncapped all these volcanoes ages ago. You notice all over here is melting, uh, this place over here is melting, this the, this entire section over here is melting, this area here is pretty solid, and this area is at the bottom is, is uh, it's okay. But what we're doing here is, damn it, get rid of that. I don't want that messing with the amount of, or I don't want uh, the iron ore we've got in there to be entombed. Now you can see there the polluted ice is at minus 25.3, 24, <laughs> it's going down rather rapidly. The reason being is there's a whole bunch of incredibly hot iron on there, and it's causing everything to melt. Now, let's just grab this, copy settings over, there you go, there you go, there you go. And that should start moving all the iron from all those, well, once we get those, the power hooked up and such like, but that'll get all the iron down here, and then we can start melting the place out of it. Ooh, and we should also get rid of all the stuff in here. This can all go. And yeah, even that stuff. So, it turns out when you dump about 300 tons of hot iron onto the bottom of this planet, it just sort of goes down, and it just keeps going down. But I suppose that's a good sign. And once it gets all the way to the bottom, hopefully we can uh, melt this place from the bottom up. I'm thinking we're going to run some conveyor rails and maybe do a little bit of a, a scooch about the place. The plan would be to sort of make it look a bit like back here, and sort of like this room, but, you know, with, with iron on the rails instead. We just have to scan all of them and make sure we can figure out how much we're going to be getting and, uh, oh, and sort of meter out the amount that comes out of it. It should melt the place pretty good, it just might take a while. Well, that went just straight down all the way to the bottom. I'm thinking temperature shift plate right there as well. Um, that should hopefully melt out the bottom of that. <laughs> oh my god, water's down up to 20 degrees down there. There's actually some... Nice, balmy water. You could take, like, okay, I'm not saying you'd probably want to take a bath in that, but that's, like, pretty good, right? Not that cold. You'd be fine. Actually, I'm not even sure if it's the correct temperature for a bath. Or a shower. All right, let's see. Uh, you guys are going to strand. Poor pal over there. Hey, pal. How you doing? You don't have hard, super hard digging, do you? You're just sort of stuck up there. Yeah, and someone's scolding. Zap. <sighs> God damn it, Zap. You managed to... Catch yourself between two pieces of sand so that all of the, just all of it, is, is right there. I am 
fine. We are going to get you to leave. Uh, in fact, we're going to get you to go a good distance away. Up there, quickly. Come on. Run. But thankfully, they have fast healing, so they should be grand in a wee bit. Idiot. In fact, I'm pretty sure they'll be back in a minute to scald themselves some more. Yep, yep, here they go. No, 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 you know what? Why don't you go and analyze that one? Yeah, once you're closer to that one, that one should be the first one you go for, right? Come on, yeah, there you go. Perfection. All right, I've uh, turned these off for a little bit. I want to make sure that our duplicates are, don't get distracted in their jobs. Their jobs being, well, demolish this entire place. Well, all the stuff that's not ice. So sand, rock, all that stuff has got to go. We want to leave behind the ice so that it can make a giant ball of steam. I'm not sure the volcanoes can generate that much heat in a short enough period of time, but maybe. I mean, it'd be interesting. It's an interesting challenge. One thing I would like to do is melt this area here. And to do that, we're going to take the 50 C water that's on top of this volcano and just sort of pour it on in there. Yeah, that should melt through it pretty quick. The amount of heat we're dumping in there should handily dispose of all of that, which is probably going to come down here. Ooh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's maybe store that water in there and... Ooh. Damn it. You know what? Let's store all that water on this side of the map. Assuming that it doesn't break too fast enough. This is going to... Uh, that's going to melt out at some point, and when it does, all of the water in here is going to start pouring down. So maybe a few walls here and there might help us out. Come on. The trick being, of course, that none of them trap themselves in, which they don't appear to have done. Excellent. Uh, this volcano is probably going to get a little bit annoyed when I do this, but you know what? It's okay. The whole place is going to become a giant steam room eventually, so it's not really a big deal. I was tempted about using a tepidizer, but... Mm, you know what? That that feels like it would be cheating. Unless all the heat comes from the volcanoes, I mean, what's the point? I was patiently waiting for that tile to go. Finally. And that's a whole bunch more temperature dumped down there. That should... Whoa. Where did all the sand... God damn it. <laughs> the polluted water gets evaporated. The evaporated polluted water leaves behind the dirt. The dirt gets heated up and turns into sand. It just... I've even found some molten glass occasionally as well. All right then. Well, that melted most of that, but not... All of that stuff over there. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's seal this off for a minute and maybe see if we can't contain a little bit more of this. It might be nice if we could melt some of the the section over this end. Okay, that's that's enough of that. I've been trying to melt this whole area, and I think no, it's gonna take like a few hundred more cycles before this becomes fully melted. We can we can do some things to help speed that along, but for now, there's not really much we can do about it. We need a lot more heat to get this place melted. So I'm thinking instead, we're going to get started on the base that's going to go here. I'm thinking we give, say, ooh, three tiles a distance and then... Yeah, right about there should be good. And why is that giving me a hat symbol? Come on, guys. Several of you can build this stuff. Oh, and I think I'm going to get rid of... Uh, oh, should we get rid of the polluted oxygen? Yeah, we're probably going to have to get rid of the polluted oxygen, namely because we have no way of filtering that out. Though we might want to cut off the bottom of the map first. Hmm... Let me, let me do an awful, 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 awful lot of building. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, better idea. We stick this stuff on conveyor rails now. Then by the time we're finished building our base, the whole place should hopefully be a lot more melted. Uh, let me put together... Oh, we're going to have to use a lot of steel, aren't we? Super, super simple plan. Conveyor loader, auto sweeper. It's just going to weave a bit around here down at the bottom, and then it's just going to go straight up. If you haven't gotten bled off most of the heat by the time we've left the bottom, there is something horrifyingly wrong, especially considering this is where most of the chill is still locked up. Oh, we're actually getting some melting over here. Oh, that's carbon dioxide. Never mind. Okay, never mind. There, there's, like, stuff over here that's minus 50 degrees. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be a while. All right, I'll cut back in once we've got that sorted and we can start the iron flowing. One very long transport rail connected. That's probably the longest straight one I've ever done. Because, well, actually, maybe not. It's one of the longer ones I've done. Anyway, we're going to load up about a ton of the stuff here. I don't want to... I, I put on steel, didn't I? <sighs> Much better. Found the iron. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. And uh, this is at 563 degrees. Let's see. What are you looking like now? 471. Ooh. How much temperature are you dropped? 276. You know what? Let's grab this here. Let's split it. And let's put on a flow control. We can limit it to something a little bit more reasonable. So, after installing the new version, let's see. 
stuff inside here actually cools right, rather rapidly, but the stuff on the rail is now cooling down nice and quick. We've limited it to five kilos. So with five kilos on it, a little bit more sway, we can drain pretty much the entirety of the heat out. In fact, how's this stuff up here doing? It's nicely chill as well. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so while that's doing its things for the next God knows how long to get all that iron out of there, all that iron will get shifted up to the top of the map, all the way up to here. The place will get a little bit warmer, a little bit more ice will melt, and that will mean that when the time, when the time comes to drop off our pawn on this little island and leave, the place should be a nice steam room. Now, I know, I know, this base looks kind of dumb, and it is kind of dumb, but it's only going to be a single duplicate base, which is why we only have one bedroom. I'm not even giving you the options for expansion. The only purpose for this base is that this iron needs to be loaded into a cannon and fired off at our industrial planet, which we haven't actually built our industrial planet yet, but we'll, we'll get around to it, and when we do, that's what's job. So over here, we've got our single bedroom, then we've got our cooking area over here. This is also going to be our dining room. I didn't put in a dining... Fine, we'll get some furniture and we'll put in a dining chair. That'll take a second. We're also going to be walling in that uh, polluted oxygen vent there, or that uh, oxygen pump. So that will actually be the dining room in there. And that should be a great hall. That will be the bedroom. That will be the bathroom. We haven't actually sealed everything up yet because we haven't put in everything. We've got most of the power wiring in place. We've got some of the plumbing and most of the gas. Yeah, I... Uh, it had hit late into the night, that's why I kind of skipped forward most of this until I got to this point. I was like, yeah, I just kept going as late as I could. Now, the only things left to do are, well, we have to get the gas out, gas input and gas output out of here. So we're also going to need to have something that drops down the methane and collects it. I'm thinking probably over here. Now, let me wire up the uh, gas output, because the gas needs to go over here, and it's going to feed six slicksters. Those six slicksters are what are going to provide the food to keep this base running. So, yeah, give me one minute while I see if I can navigate this. Well, that gets all the carbon dioxide out of there. All the carbon dioxide will get sent over here, dumped in with the slicksters, then the excess will overflow up here and go into this, which is basically just a, a canister filler. And the gas from that will be fed to the soda fountain, and the soda fountain will be fed to our duplicate, because of course, why not? We might as well include some of these amenities while we're making these little bases. And the steam turbines over here, their only purpose will be to, well, to cool down the volcanoes. There's, there's five of them in here, it's probably massively overkill, but it looks pretty. So uh, once these volcanoes eventually get around to boiling this entire ice planet, which it's going to take a while. Yeah, it's going to take a long while. They've, they've actually done a, quite a bit of melting down here. This place was solid ice when we came down here originally, so that's actually a pretty good job. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's still going to be a long time. This is one of those long-term projects. You just leave running in the background. It's like ants. You come back in a while and suddenly, oh, wow, look, that whole planet's on fire. All right, over here, we're going to put in our methane melter. Before we start throwing the methane melter together, I should probably put in a few airflow tiles. We should let the gas pressure escape. Like, we're going to have to pump out this whole place. It's full of polluted oxygen. There's no way anyone can live in this. But once that's done, I'm thinking, yeah, methane melter, same as the water tank planet. One thing we need to finish this build out is a big pool of super coolant down here. I have uh, maybe forgotten to send that over ahead of schedule, but I did remember to send over a whole bunch of petroleum. Supercoolant is just starting to arrive now. The reason we sent over the petroleum is, well, it actually comes down to this gas piping here. Turns out I made a little bit of a boo-boo. When we're putting in this gas piping, what we're going to need to do is make sure it's the correct temperature. So give me some radiant pipes there. If it's too cold, it'll kill off the slicksters. So instead, what we're going to do is stick in a high-pressure gas vent right there. And boom, now all of the natural, or the, all of the carbon dioxide that comes in here will be heated up to about 80 degrees by this, whatever you call liquid tepidizer. However, we need a medium for it, and if there's not enough petroleum to start, it won't heat up anything, and then by the time the slicksters produce enough petroleum, they'll already be dead. So, um, let's just put in a, a little bit of petroleum to make sure that the, uh, the tepidizer has something to work with. There we go, soon the slickster room will be prepped, and at the same time, we should be getting more super good arriving all the time. Or petroleum, whatever. But we'll eventually get the necessary ingredients to finish off this. Well, we've got enough petroleum in there. You need 400 kilos of petroleum or liquid in a section or the tepidizer won't work. That should be plenty. Now what we're doing is we're putting down a giant cooling loop. So this here is our, our cooling section. It's going to go through here, through these steam turbines, through our natural gas section, up here through a tepidizer, which is in the bottom of our uh, 
our methane cooler, and then go all the way around through our living areas and come back down again. Well, not all through the living areas. Some of it's a little bit uh, pipe heavy right now, but it'll be fine-ish. Anyway, then it comes all the way back down here and goes through the uh, the aqua tuner again. So this is going to be very open plan. People are going to be able to walk in and out of this tepidizer if we do it right. Well, that's the hope. Anyway, with all of that finished, I think we can find... Oh, that's right, super coolant. We should have more along on the way shortly. I keep sending over more and more, but there's never enough super coolant on this planet just yet. Give me another few minutes and we should have enough to allow this tepidizer to work as well. There we go. Just like back on the other planet, and the planet before that. This is, what, our second or third colony? Whatever, it's, it's another colony that's going to be providing, ent running entirely on methane. Uh, same thing in Majiggy, the methane will come down, go through here, melt, and then once it's melted it turns into gas, the gas will get pumped down and go get fed into the natural gas generators. We've done everything slightly differently and with a few extra quirks to it, just because, well, that's sort of the joy of doing it this way. Alright, uh, the one thing I do need to do is I need to take out all the gases. The gases here are a complicated mix of annoyance, like this here at least is all carbon dioxide, except for that tiny patch of polluted oxygen, which we're going to pretend doesn't exist. So what I've done is I've put down a few liquid blobs. For example, there's a liquid blob of napta there and there, which means this place is separated gaseously from here and here, and there's a blob there, and there's a blob there, and there's a blob there, and a blob there. Basically, most of this area is sealed off from other parts of it by blobs of supercoolant, or not supercoolant, uh, napta. In fact, I think... I think we can put another one there. Mm. It, never mind, we'll, we'll come back to that. What I'm going to do now though is some of these areas that are sealed off, we're just going to pump them out and I'm thinking we're going to oxygenate a lot of them. Now I would like to gas pressurize this place a little bit before we start throwing in the natural gas, otherwise we're going to end up with a bunch of polluted oxygen in here. Not the end of the world, but I'd like to keep it nice and clean with oxygen. So instead, we're going to put down a bunch of oxygen in here. In fact, we'll make that a thousand. There we go. So we'll put in one ton of oxalite in there, and that should sort out the problems. Let's make sure I didn't accidentally starve anyone of oxygen. You guys have 14 tons, and you guys have... Oh, yeah, no, we accidentally starved you guys of oxygen. There you go. You can have all the oxalite back that we took from you. you. You'll be grand. And that will oxygenate this place up. There we go. It's, even, it's looking better already. Once that's about 1.5 kilos of pressure, what we can do then is just... Uh, send over the natural gas and start producing power. I think we're ready to start firing over a methane. A little bit of methane down here will sort this place right out. That means we just need to go back to Texas and get our next cannon working. Oh yeah, which ones are firing? And just the ones. So that means you need to start targeting color on. Uh, yeah, perfect. What's that gonna cost? 70 rad bolts. No problems. That's a price we can afford to pay. Now, sever that line. Don't want this going any further. Up. Edit. Perfect. Limited to one kilo per second. Hmm. All right. What are you missing? Nope. You got red bolts. You know what? Since it doesn't require anything here, let's just put this up to twenty. There we go. That'll fill it up nice and quickly. I want to get a couple of shots fired over before we start limiting it again, just so that we have a little bit of a, a stockpile before we get started. Maybe just one more. All right, that's enough of that. Uh, we'll limit you back to one again. Let that keep going on its way and... Done. The great thing is, even when it's busy re waiting for its next dash of rads, in fact, turn on a second one. And we've already got two running. I don't really see the point in firing up another one. What are you set to? 500 and you're set to 500. Yep, yeah, we'll leave them as is. I think there's enough to keep us going. Oh, and the water is activated. Yeah, the water tank has sent a green signal. That green signal has gone over to Dampona and, well, the, the, the water tank planet. And the water tank planet is now firing over water to keep everything topped up. Excellent. Plan is working as intended. All right, now we just got to go back to Calderon. And, yeah, how are we going to power this again? What, we'll just hook up a couple of coal generators to get it started. Uh, that should get it booted, and once it's booted, we'll worry about the rest. I'll just plug it into the cool, cool generators, two coal generators we've got up there. Well, here... Here it comes. We've got 400 kilos already arrived. Let's get that stuff loaded up. And let's hope it works correctly. Okay, we're going to load you. You're set to one. All right, dazzle me. Let's see. Goes in, goes across. Question is, does it melt fast enough? Or does it have to do multiple routes? Ooh. 
Oh, it's coming off the rail already. Perfect. I prefer not for it to go around more than once, but sometimes, like, when you're booting this up, it will take two rotations or two or even three rotations before it starts, but it should do it cleanly. Yeah, perfect. Now all we got to do is wait till the pressure hits about 20 kilos. Once it does, we can start pumping natural gas in here. I've also have not maxed out the natural gas generators in here. We only have what one, we're one short of what we need. I might change that a little bit later, but for now I want to back up some natural gas in the system so we have more than we need. Power has started to flow. Excellent. Now we can start plugging in all these things that would be quite useful to have on. Uh, namely, where is it? Conductive wire. There, that should turn on the liquid tepidizer over there. That makes sure any of the carbon dioxide coming through there will get heated up. So that room should start getting pressurized. Right now we're at 21 grams of carbon dioxide. That should start to rise rather rapidly now. Uh, why are... Oh, it hasn't backed up in the other generator. So it's going to prioritize the bottom row, then it'll do the secondary ones. Nice. And why aren't you going? Ah, yes, you are going to filter out oxygen. Oxygen gets dumped back into the system by this one. Uh, this gas pump here. And any non-oxygen gets kicked out. And we'll probably have to do that first. And done. I'm not going to turn on the Atmosuit dogs just yet. That should at least get us started. Yeah, perfect. Now we just got to fill up this place with oxygen somehow. Hmm. That might take it. What the? Hmm. I just realized something. I need to put some sort of flow control here. This is not good. Uh, the problem is the carbon dioxide that should be going in here is fine, but it's supposed to be when the carbon dioxide fills up this, it overflows up that direction. Unfortunately, we're sending down some polluted oxygen. And so we'll, we'll sort it out. We'll just put in a quick gas bridge. Problem will be solved. This looks... Yeah, this looks incredibly messy. Uh, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to scrape all the gases out of here. You see, this, uh, this liquid tank in here, that's going to be containing a lot of hot water, and we want to keep that heat separate from this area. So we want to scrape out all the gases here first, and then we can seal this in and then pressurize that up. I also want to take out all the gases out of these downstairs areas as well. Like this area here, I want all the gases gone. This is where our slicksters are going to pop out, and I don't want them putting blobs of oil everywhere. So I think we'll put a layer of liquid along the bottom here to stop that from happening, but that will be later. Oh, and this, this little room I'm kind of... Proud yet not proud of at the same time. This is a steam room that you can walk through. Um, I know it's not the craziest thing in the world, but just the way we vacuumed out everything and put liquid blobs in so many places means there's liquid blobs here, 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 here. Well, Napta just everywhere, and it has given us a nice contained steam room that people can walk through to get out the other side. This is even vacuum seals that the heat from here can't get out. Kind of liking that. Just give me one more minute while I vacuum out this room up here and this room down there. And I think at that point, we're ready to start kicking into gear. Uh, yeah, I think we shall. Well, that went surprisingly well. We managed to get rid of all of the gases that were in here. That just... Well, we've got a special delivery that's come along. We've got our berry sludge, our rad pills, and a couple of molten larvae eggs. Uh, when are you incubating? 8% incubation and the other one's 15%. Both of those are going to get picked up and dumped down here into these incubators. We want to start the population of Slicksters in here. Though I have immediately messed up and not put a stand for them to, well, a, an animal drop-off, a critter drop-off. Kind of a little bit of a short-sighted approach on my part, I will admit. I kind of messed up on that front. However, that was a quick fix. We just stuck in a critter drop-off. Now we've got 20 kilos of carbon dioxide pressure in there. All the excess carbon dioxide is getting dumped off into space, but not before passing that canister filler, which now has plenty of carbon dioxide in it. Now we just have a few last things to set up. Now one thing we had to do is we had to wait until this water got to about 500 kilos. We could have actually started using this at 100 kilos of pressure, but honestly, I had other stuff I needed to be doing on this planet, but we'll, we'll get around to that in a bit. You notice this cooling loop is going all the way around and going through these metal plates here. Why this chunk here? Well, that's to do with the iron coming up from the bottom of the map. As the game goes on, we're going to want to have some way of making sure that iron comes out nice and cool. This will just pre-cool it before passing it through our base, and then when it gets out the other side, it's, you know, 20 to 30 degrees. All perfect. Now, what we need to do here is start setting up the oxygen, though. So we're using a, a similar trick to the last time. Good water comes out of here, comes down into this section, it gets boiled. If the pressure here gets too high, hey, we'll make that, uh, say, one kilo. Pressure here gets above one kilo. The aqua tuner turns on, the polluted water all gets boiled, and that turns on the steam turbine. Steam turbine turns it into clean water. Clean water gets shunted up here. Ooh, I need, I need a temperature sensor in here as well, might I? One moment. There we go. Temperature sensor installed. Well, if the, there's too much water in here, or too much gas pressure in here, or there's 
too much liquid pressure in here. This thermal aqua tuner activates. This causes the gas to get sent up into the steam turbine and any excess water that we don't need in here gets shunted up into this section. And this is where it all gets, uh, explain this. Well, some of it goes into oxygen production right here. Any overflow from the oxygen production goes up into the toilets and any overflow from the toilets goes up into the soda fountain. And now we should be able to turn this on. However, um, due to some poor foresight on my part, there's going to be a lump of hydrogen that comes out of here probably pretty quickly. Well, no, we haven't hooked that up yet, but there was just uh, too much hydrogen here, not enough oxygen. You yet float up to the top. One. Nice, I think we're about there. It's starting to overpressurize. So, in that case, we get the gas pipe continued on, and there's going to be one big blob of hydrogen that comes out, but after that, should all be oxygen. There we go. Much... It, it's... whatever. It's a bit. It shouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Oof. No, it's, it's only milligrams. It's fine. It's fine. We'll get rid of it. And done. Now this base starts to get oxygenated. The hydrogen should all congregate up here somehow, and we'll let that uh, float away into the background of space. We'll do a little trick to get rid of that. But that's now the base oxygenated, the toilets filled, and... Oh wait, how do I get rid of the excess water out of here? Just thinking, what happens when this thing has too much water? Oh, damn it. Wait, wait, no, 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 I thought of this one already. This t yep, no, I planned ahead for that one. Right, so if this thing has too much water in it, we don't want to be shunting any more water into it. But what we can do is we don't want to destroy the polluted water either. So in this instance, what we do is... When this liquid reservoir is full, as in there's, it's 85%, if it goes below 85% fullness, it keeps allowing water to go into it, but once it's 90% full, it sends an off signal to this. And once this shuts off, that polluted water can't get in there anymore. And when the polluted water can't get in here anymore, it can't get boiled and sent in there to be turned into oxygen, so the excess polluted water gets sent up here, and it's going to get dumped into reed fiber. We haven't planted the reed fiber yet because we haven't sent over the seeds, but that is the plan. Uh, so that will give reed fiber for the Atmos suits. The slicksters down here will give food, and the water gets, well, provides the oxygen, and done. That gives the sort of living quarters for the duplicant, and there we go. We've got a great hall, bedroom, recreation room, and a washroom. Recreation room is there to make sure that they don't do, you know, something silly like, oh, you know, go outside when they shouldn't be. Oh, we should also put down a gate here as well so that we can juice gate activation stuff. You know what? This place here can go. Actually, right here outside the door is fine, and we can... Pause a second while it takes a screenshot, and where are we? Minipod. And we're going to make it out of graphite because that melts at an extremely low temperature, and you never know, maybe we'll want to melt it at some point. We're also going to put a drop-off over here. In case we print any eggs out of here, we can dump them over there just to have extra meat storage. A few extra wild critters just, you know, that will drop meat occasionally can help boost up meat supplies. And I think that, that's the guts of it done. Oh, I think our hookup, yep. And now that we've actually got gas pressure in here, let's see what the temperature is like. Yeah, I was expecting it to be a bit warm around here. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, it'll, it'll sort itself out. Right. Furniture-wise, put in a quick light. Uh, where are we? That means down here we'll have some illumination for the electric grill. And we're done. Oh. Down here, any eggs that are produced, anything like that, they get shunted in there. This is where we're going to, well, have our slicksters stored. And uh, then this auto sweeper here can pick them up. This auto sweeper actually has access to those eggs, so it can load up the incubators. And then if it, when it's finished with it, oh damn it! I just realized something that needs to be upside down. Right, any meat that drops here will get dumped into this conveyor loader and sent up there, namely because they can also access that section. So any critters that die in there end up here, getting sent over to this section. And any critters that die in here, we might even turn these on and run them full time, just so that whatever duplicate stays here can level up their ranching scale. I know the next patch is supposed to fix the ranching bug so that they can gain skills off the grooming station, but I'm okay if it takes a little bit of if they can waste a little bit of time and gain some more st skills there. That still leaves one or two glaring problems. One, we need to be able to launch all of this stuff back home. All of this iron, we need a, a launch cannon and we need a nuclear waste, you know, launch facility as in powered by nuclear waste so that we can get a whole bunch of rads. That's on the way. We are currently loading up a rocket with nuclear waste. Well, we will be at some point once the nuclear waste shows up. And I think these things can hold it. Well, I'm hopeful they won't be spitting out lots of it. They might spit out some of it, but we should be able to get it in faster than it gets spit out. That's the theory. And if we can bring over even just 27 tons of nuclear waste, that should provide us with more than enough rads. All right, and one last thing down here. We need to make some permanent solutions here for taking all of the iron out of these volcanoes and dumping it to the bottom of the map, which 
I will point out, we have melted quite a large quantity of this. In fact, the top half of the map is now looking really, really toasty. Which, yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. All right, uh, down here is the plan. We basically line this in a metal box. We dump in a bunch of water in it to make sure the temperature equalizes. And then any iron that pops out will instantly turn into iron ore. That iron ore gets dumped into the conveyor loader. Conveyor loader sends that out the side here where it gets dropped off to the bottom of the map. And then we just repeat that. Oh, actually, that one's going to be a tough one. Maybe in a second we'll do that one. We can do the exact same thing with this one. Done. Now anytime it erupts, this heat gets dissipated by the big metal box around it that should eventually end up covered in steam. And all of the resources that ended up inside here will just get swept up. I think we put some brine in there just to act as a transfer medium. So done. Now I just got to do the rest for do this for all the other two volcanoes. Uh, this one could be interesting. Well, I don't think I should leave that much water in there. That was a minor mistake, but we can pump some of that out as long as you keep an eye on it and don't leave too little water in there, we should be grand. Over here, this is working out excellently. Every time this erupts, this turns into steam and it just sort of, well, we're heating up all this water as it goes along. This water is actually being pumped up from the bottom of the map. Where is it? Down here? But down here is actually, wow. I just dumped some ice through there that that, did, that really cooled it down. But we're taking this relatively warmish water, we're dumping it up here on top of this active volcano, which then comes down over this side and dumps into this section and it's slowly melting its way through this. This is the only ice part left of this planet. The entire rest of the planet has been melted by volcanoes. I, I think it's a good sign. Now over here, oh, actually I think I can send over some more molten larvae. We'll send over another one. We want to have this place all prepped and ready to go when the first duplicate arrives, so I figure we can just keep firing them over, though I'm kind of kind of out of time. Dear Lord, it takes so long to make these little bases. There's just so many sections of it to go in. Like, first you got to do all the piping. Well, maybe not first. Then you got to do all the gas. Oh, don't forget you got to put in all the power. Uh, there's also the prep work that is involved. Oh, automation. Don't forget that. That's always, that's always a good thing to have done. Oh, I'm getting the gas pressures and everything everywhere. Wow. And liquids. Yep, yep, forgot about that. Now, these steam turbines won't be active for a while, and I'm probably going to have to do something about these gases when the time comes. All that polluted oxygen is going to have to be shifted out, but there's no way I'm getting rid of the polluted oxygen until, well, we've melted all of the ice and got all the polluted water safely stored below a layer of clean water. That's the Then the polluted water can't off-gas, and we can vacuum this place out. It's going to take a while for the volcanoes to boil all this water, considering they're all only hitting about... Let's just say it'll be a while, so we can wait. There's no rush on that front. But I do want to get into a duplicate as soon as possible. Anyway, this I'll do. I'll do some cleanup on the, the back end and we'll bring in a duplicate. And then uh, I'll go over a quick run over this down the, the start of the next episode. But I think the next episode is going to be all about doing, well, an industrial base. And I think for the industrial base, was it? No, it's not Ikeani. It's Frostona. Yeah, this. Oh, no. It is Ikeani. It's got a gold volcano, a copper go volcano, and an iron volcano. And the cobalt. Cobalt, gold, copper, and iron. That seems like an excellent planet for an industrial base. I say we turn most of this into some sort of industrial sauna and then just have eight duplicates living here. This is going to be a much larger base in general and much harder to achieve. All right, but that's for the next episode. Sorry about the delays these days. It's just the episodes take longer to get out and I'm just, uh, I was doing a little bit of a move in the background. But uh, I hope you enjoyed and good luck. Thank you.